Hey what's up everyone, I am Nitej and in this video, I will talk about some of the best programming practices to follow when handling exceptions in the C-sharp language using the try, catch and finally blocks. Contrary to the popular belief, exceptions do not really mean that something went wrong. Exceptions are literally meant to signal exceptional situations, like something out of the ordinary has happened and the program needs to tell the user about it. So an exception can either signal a negative situation or maybe sometimes a positive situation. Exceptions can be created by either the common language runtime or any other third party library. We can also create new exceptions and they can be raised by using the throw keyword. So before I start to talk about the best practices of this video, first let's briefly see what are the different items involved when we are about to handle exceptions in any c -sharp method. There are four basic parts when it comes to exception handling in c -sharp. First one is the try block, then there is the catch block, then there is finally block and then there is the throw keyword. Inside the try block, we have to put the piece of code which we think can cause an exception. Catch block is used to catch the exception. When any exception is raised, then the first matching catch block will be transferred the code execution context and the exception will be passed onto it as an argument. Throw keyword can be used to explicitly raise an exception. If you are still thinking why do we even need to raise an exception by ourselves, then I must tell you that this keyword is used frequently in projects. Finally block is used to perform any kind of cleanup operation to make sure that the code which is after the finally block will keep on running fine even if it is using any of the resources from the previous try block. So with the basic stuff out of our way, let's now see the different best practices along with the code examples so that we can understand them in a better way. The first one is use a catch block with the intention to handle the exception. If you are not handling the exception in any way, then rethrow it at the end of a catch block because there is no point in silently letting it go. Better to either log it or to throw it as an error so that the devs will know and they will write code to handle it. Like over here, this catch block is not really handling the exception, so there is no point in silently ignoring it. The better way is to simply throw this exception. The higher level code execution will capture it and then will do something about it. The user will see the error in the application execution and then they will eventually report it to the developers of the application. Second one is to try to catch and handle specific types of exceptions which makes sense for your method execution. If any exception raised is not matching with the ones you expect, then either throw them or log them somewhere to look at them later. In this example, you can see that the code is first trying to open this text file and then it is trying to read this file's contents. Now when handling the exceptions, we should first make sure that we will handle exceptions which are specific to this kind of operation which is being performed in this try block. In this case, the exceptions could be that either the directory is not available or maybe the file name is not correct. So we should try to catch these exceptions first and we should also add a generic catch block in the end just to make sure that if any of the exception which is not matching these specific types has been raised then we are going to handle it by maybe logging it somewhere or otherwise throwing it for the higher level catch block in the extract trace to handle it. Third one is use a finally block whenever necessary. Code inside the finally block always executes even if an exception is thrown. For example, if an exception is raised during external file access, then use the finally block to close any open file handles and release the resources. In this code example, even if an exception is raised, the finally block over here will make sure that the stream reader object will eventually be closed and all of the resources which are being held will be released. There is another concept which I want to tell you about and that is code which is written after the finally block will execute even when an exception is raised. This is a common interview question which has been asked like a million times now in c -sharp interviews. This is the reason I am including it as a coding best practice to be aware of. If it is not possible or feasible to write try catch blocks for each and every method execution deeper in the stack, then make sure you have try catch block at least in the higher execution stacks. This will make sure that any exception occurred will propagate upwards in the execution stack and will be either handled by the catch block meant specifically for that exception or it will be caught by the topmost generic catch block for all exceptions. Like in this code example, 
This method is throwing a divide by zero exception but there is no try and catch block to handle this or catch it. So what this means is this is the responsibility of the method which is in the topmost execution context which is this one. Now even if the exception is not caught by all of the inner method execution it will eventually propagate to the top level try catch block and it will be caught by this catch block over here. Now if you are handling it then just do something about it like maybe log it somewhere or let the user know that something has gone wrong and if you are not doing anything about it then just throw it to let the user know that there is an error or an exception which the system cannot handle and the devs need to know about it. Next one is to write catch blocks in the order of most specific to least specific. This matters because when an exception occurs then the first catch block having a matching type will have it. So as a rule of thumb always keep the generic catch blocks at the end of the catch block list. Also the C sharp compiler will not allow you to have the generic catch blocks before any other specific catch block. So that is something to keep in mind too. Otherwise if you are handling specific exceptions then make sure to first handle those which are most specific and then go on to handle the least specific exceptions so that we can pinpoint the exact reason why the exception was raised in the first place. The last best practice for this video is this one. Before the catch block can rethrow the exception for it to be handled by the higher level catch block, if possible it should be handled at least partially. So if we have added try and catch blocks in the inner method executions then it does not mean that it is always the responsibility of the topmost catch block in the execution context to handle that exception. If possible we should at least try to partially handle the exception which has been raised in the inner method executions after it has been partially handled by the inner method executions then we can again rethrow it for the higher execution stack methods catch block to handle it. These were the exception handling best practices to learn in this video. Please do let me know if you have any questions and use the comments to ask them. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you soon. Take care of yourselves and have a great time.